Okay, YouTube, I'm back. I'm doing a second update today. Um, since the last video, I have um, built the center, front and rear diffs, and went and got my hair cut. So now I've got this one. I'm going to record this one, produce it, and that probably is the last one for today. Um, I'm going to start off with a video here on the diffs. It's bag A and B. Now, Ryan Lutz has already done a video on how to build the diffs. I'm no Ryan Lutz, not even close. Um, but his video on the diffs was produced poorly. Um, the, it's really far away and stuff, so I'm really not building it any differently than what he did. I'm just giving you closer up pictures. So uh, before we get started on the diffs, I wanted to lay all the parts out. I'm kind of anal about how I do things. So these are all the parts in their bags um, on my exercise mat, which is in the same room that I do my builds in. It's like a multi-purpose hobby room, whatever. So um, I've got all the parts laid out in alphabetical order. I find it's much easier to find things that way. So here are all the parts as they're all laid out. It's not nearly as impressive in these three little pictures here, but uh, trust me, it's uh, there's a lot of bags. So we're going to start off with bag A, and now this is my, like I said, first non-Tamiya build, and um, it's kind of nice that Techno puts all of the parts that you need in a bag, right? So all of the hardware, all of the gaskets, all the bearings and everything are all in one bag. So that's really nice for a first time builder. It's a much nicer layout than what Tamiya does with the parts sprues and the different screw bags and all of that kind of stuff. Um, this makes building it much easier step by step wise. So one of the things that I'm doing, uh, not part of the team build, this is part of my own um, extra durability upgrade, is I will be replacing the stock kit plastic spur gear with the um, hardened steel part number TKR5115. Okay, um, they say it's lightened. That's because it has these little holes drilled out of it. Um, the whole reason why I'm doing this, if I, if I was just going to run this on the turf track, I probably wouldn't do this because obviously the plastic gear, the plastic spur is going to be lighter weight, less rotational mass is always good. Um, I would be concerned it, on durability wise running this on the big track. The big track is a black groove clay surface. It's very dusty. Um, little pebbles and stuff kick up, get underneath the, um, the body and possibly get mushed in between the spur and the pinion and then causing deformation in the spur. What that does do is create a fail safe here with the spur gear, right? So you could pretty easily swap out the center diff, um, pop in a new spur if you're looking for a fail safe. So take that into consideration. Um, if you're looking for a fail safe, probably stick with this uh, stock plastic spur gear. But if you're looking for the ultimate durability, I think going with the steel spur is the better choice. Um, so this is all the parts laid out now. Um, I've got a little sample pot of the Utter Butter. Um, it's a grease that is, it's a red grease designed for bearings and metal to metal surfaces. Um, I've also got a pot of 110% racing blood gear grease, right, which looks nearly identical to this. Um, I'm not going to use the 110%, it's a much smaller pot, it was expensive, this stuff was free. Um, so, and I had considered using the Tamiya anti-wear grease, which is fantastic stuff, metal to metal contact, but I got thinking about it and um, the AW grease um, is intended for gear diffs, clearly that's what these are, uh, but not um, fluid filled, just plain grease them up and go. Um, I've packed diffs with nothing but AW grease, which creates a very, very tight diff. Um, so I, I opted not to actually use the AW grease. So uh, ignore that in the picture here. So this is what the um, Utter Butter looks like. I put a tiny little bit on the tip of my finger. You can see it's not very thick of a layer because you can see my fingerprint still through the layer of grease and one of the first things I do is I coat the um, the gaskets right these are paper gaskets and um, I coat it with the utter butter um, because I want to create a, a seal on that paper gasket to extend its life um, 
I don't know what the manual calls for. It may suggest using it dry. It may say use a little bit of the diff fluid on it. But um, being a paper gasket, it will absorb that moisture from the diff fluid, um, and then it will deform and swell and uh, get weaker. So what I've found to build a nice, tight, leak-proof diff that lasts a very long time is to use a grease on it like this utter butter. Um, and then, of course, the O-ring seals. Now, um, you always want to coat these up in some kind of a grease. Uh, I think they call for uh, black grease in the manual. Um, but again, I'm going to just stick using the Utter Butter. Um, you want to coat just enough. There's, you can see that there's no blobs or globs or anything like that. It's just enough to put a coating on it, just for the same reasons that I coat the paper gasket. Now, um, you put the diff together as the instructions call, the bearing, uh, the outdrive, and then you drop the o-ring down on. I use my angled uh, tweezers to uh, push it down the shaft of the outdrive so that it gets nicely seated inside the diff housing. You want to make sure that it's down as far as it goes. Make sure you don't uh, pinch or damage the o-ring with the tweezers. And then you get your washer. Um, so you want to get a, a nice light coating on the washer. This is mainly just to keep things moving smoothly there between the O-ring and the washer itself. This washer acts as a pressure mechanism to squish that O-ring seal to keep the diff fluid from leaking past that O-ring and out your axles. You drop that down on top, and then I use my angled screwdriver or my angled tweezers again to push that. Uh, tensioner down like so, so it's down as far as it can go. So is a kind of a neat thing what Techno has done. The outdrives, you know, they've got a groove for the dog bone, and that groove aligns with the hole in the shaft where the retaining pin goes through. Now, uh, the diff housing is smaller than what the length of the retaining pin is from here to here, so you need to line up the the groove in the outdrive, align that with one of these longer sections of the diff housing. This is where your cross pin is going to sit eventually, but right now we want to use that as a little extra space to drop this retention pin down inside. And then just use tweezers or a pair of needle nose and slide that on through. Now, one of the things that I noticed building this is this was maybe the easiest cross pin retention pin um, that I've ever put into a diff, which has me a little bit nervous because that's telling me that the pressure that that um, spacer, washer, whatever you want to call it, that it's exerting on that red o-ring is not very much, which has me concerned that this diff might leak. Now I'm going to build it up using the stock parts um, on the diff construction. I want to see how long it wears, how long it takes before it starts to leak, and see where the leak is happening. Um, but my initial um, hypothesis is that that red o-ring is not going to have enough pressure on that outdrive to um, keep that diff fluid in. So we'll see how it goes, but that's a thought. I might look for um, an o-ring that's just a teeny bit larger um, or squishier. Um, I've used uh, the um, Team Durango O-rings in the past. Of course, now they're gone, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as if this O-ring proves to be insufficient. So anyways, once you get the cross of the retention pin in, you go ahead and you get your, your bevel gear, and again, uh, just a very light coat of the Utter Butter. You want to put it on the face of the gear as well as the edge of the gear, and this, again, is just to keep everything moving freely. And as you can see, there's a cross pin spot, so just pick your side and go ahead and drop it down onto the cross pin inside the diff housing. Um, as you can see, there's no room for your fingers, so you're just going to drop it in, let gravity do its thing, and then once it slaps the bottom, there's not enough room, it might be just a tiny bit cockeyed, whatever, put your finger in and twist it around until you feel that bevel gear drop down into the cross pin. And then we get our O-ring for the um, spur gear side of the center diff. We coat it up with a little bit of the Utter Butter grease as well. Drop it down on using the bent tweezers to push it down into fully seated position. And then we go ahead and we get our washer spacer slightly coated with a light coating of the Utter Butter. Drop it down and put the cross pin in.
Now, clearly this is a much easier cross pin to put in than the one inside the diff casing, um, but again, there wasn't much resistance. I didn't have to push this washer down in order to get the cross pin in. I just basically sat it down and it slid right in. Then we get our other bevel gear, coat it similarly to the one that's on the inside of the housing, a slight bit on the bottom, a slight bit around the edge, drop it down on top, make sure you wiggle it until you feel the cross pin engage in the back of the bevel gear. And then we've got our small bevel gears, okay? So we've got four of these small bevel gears. We want to put a little coating of the utter butter on the back side um, of this as well as coat the entire cross pin. Now, this is the um, plastic cross pin that comes with the kit. Um, typically, I exchange these out for metal cross pins, um, but I've already spent a ton of money on upgrades, getting this to the kit build. The kit build, or the team kit build, did not um, specify upgrading these cross pins, so that tells me that the uh, Techno team feels that these cross pins are sufficient. Um, time will tell. We'll see how this goes. The metal one's downside is that they're heavier, right, so I'm looking to reduce rotational mass by using the this composite plastic jobby. Um, but one thing that I noticed using this plastic jobby is that these arms are not uniformly formed. Right? So one of these arms was slightly larger than the rest. And you can tell that by holding the cross pin, putting a slight just a very, very, very thin layer of grease on it like we've doing, done the rest of the pieces, drop one of the small bevels down on it, and then turn it, rotate it on that cross pin and see how it turns. It should turn perfectly freely with no binding, no, no snagging, uh, just to be a nice smooth turn. And try that same gear on all four arms. And what I found was this one arm was a little bit big. So I got out one of my cross files, um, and I filed it down just enough so that when I put the small bevel gear on and turned it, there was no resistance. So uh, clearly their plastic injection molding is not quite as tight tolerance as what I'm used to with Tamiya because I've never in all of the years I've built Tamiya cars um, had a cross pin that was a plastic injection molded piece like this um, not just fit perfectly from the get-go. So then we're going to fill it up with diff fluid. Now, um, the manual calls for, I believe, 7K in the middle. Um, I think it's 775 is the manual build. Um, it's going from memory, so you know I could be wrong. Regardless, because we're um, building this for a turf track, which is extremely high grip, we need to have our diffs a little bit tighter. Now, talking with um, one of the guys at the track who runs a Techno 410, um, which has slightly different geometry than the DOT 3 version, but still, he's running 15, 15, 10, and mentioned to me that if he was building his truck strictly for the turf track, because he runs his truck on both tracks, if he was building it strictly for the turf track, he might go up just a little bit on the viscosity in his diffs. So that's what I did. I don't plan on running on the big track. It scares me. So um, I went, I'm going to go 20, 20, 15, where he's going um, 15, 15, 10. So I'm, one, I'm 5K, that's one level up from what he's using in his. So hopefully that will be a good, a good viscosity. I haven't tested this, so don't use this as gospel. This is my starting point. So you get your um, diff fluid, whatever viscosity you choose, and go ahead and fill it up so that it, it covers that large bevel gear that's in the diff housing. Um, and you can see the edge here, right here. So I'm about halfway full. Right now, the 20K, it's pretty thick, not nearly as thick as what I use in the on-road cars. I got like a million in my TA07, but um, it's pretty thick, so it's going to come out very honey-like, even thicker than honey, and let it fill up and then let it sit. As you can see, there will be bubbles, so I let all the bubbles settle out before I move on to the next step, but this is about how much you want. I'm going to make sure that that large bevel gear is certainly fully submerged, but that the diff housing is not full. You want to have about half full, ensuring that the large bevel is submerged. Once all the bubbles are gone, and with a thicker fluid, it takes a while, so I let it sit for about 20 minutes, tapping every once in a while, turning it, get the bubbles out from underneath. Um, I then put the cross member in with the small bevel gears facing inward, as they're supposed to, and you can see that the cross pin fits in the larger hole section here. 
um, it sits in and then it's just going to float on the top. You can't just let it do that. You need to push it down in. Um, so I used the back end of my tweezers, pushed it down in, rotated it slightly while pushing down to make sure that the gears, the small bevels were fully seated into the large bevel and that as I turned the out drive that all four bevels rotated inside the thing. Then I filled it the rest of the way up with diff fluid. Now you can see that I filled it up so that the um, the entire center was full of diff fluid and that the small bevel gears were just barely covered. Now it hasn't fully flowed out yet because it's so thick, but as I let it sit and let all these little bubbles come out, um, it was all just barely covering the small bevel gears, but not fully filled up. There's a reason why we don't fully fill it up. We want the diff to be absolutely full of diff fluid with no air but we also have yet one more large bevel that has to get dropped down on top of this. So if we fill it up now, when we put that large bevel, diff fluid is going to ooze out everywhere and make a horrible mess. So what I've found is that if we fill it up so that it just barely covers, right, so that all the gears are fully submerged, but there's still a tiny bit of space left, just the tiniest amount of space, once we drop that large bevel in, only a little bit of fluid will ooze out, and that's when you know you've got it perfectly full. So, once all the bubbles are out, we go ahead and retrieve our previously coated gasket, and I then coat it a second time. Um, again, just a very light coat. There's no globs or anything. It, almost it's invisible to the eye, but you can feel it. You drop the gasket down on top, aligning the holes with the holes in the diff case. And then you put the spur on top of that with the large bevel on the inside. You want to move it around to make sure that that large bevel has pushed in th down through the fluid and making good strong contact with those small bevel gears. Now, um, I learned this the hard way because I haven't built one of these before. These screws were nigh impossible to get started once it was all assembled um, because there were no threads in the housing right so um, I'm going to recommend and this is what I did for my small um, differentials for the front and the rear is I pre-threaded the hole about a millimeter down on all four holes um, before I did anything. It was like the, one of the very first things that I did. Pre-drill those holes out. Pre-tap them with your screw. Just pick one screw, put a tiny little bit of grease on it, help cut better, go down about a millimeter on all four, and then start assembling your diff. So that's a little pro tip from me to you. So when you get your screws all in, you see how I have them all in, they've got a good millimeter or so, then you tighten them down in a star pattern. Start on one screw, go to the other, go to the other, go to the other, and then snug it star pattern again, um, not in the same rotation circle. So you always want to be jumping around to make sure that that um, spur is mated to the diff housing perfectly flat. You don't want it cockeyed. And if you go one, one, and around in a circle, you'll end up with it slightly cockeyed. So you can see there's only the tiniest bit of diff fluid that has oozed up through the screw holes, um, letting me know that I've got it in damn near perfect. This is, this is almost exactly what you want to see. Maybe just a tiny bit too much, but it's almost impossible to get it exactly spot on. So I'm really pleased with how much fluid has come out through this diff. And then you also notice that there's no oil that has leaked out from the back side of the housing. All right, so that's another indicator that it was a really good job filling it up. Um, the last thing that I do is I have a pilot um, fine tip paint marker it's called, um, super fine tip, and I use that to write the viscosity of the fluid that I filled the diff in, because I'm never going to remember. Um, I, I, I don't like to use a Sharpie, because I've noticed that a Sharpie will eventually wear off in, in time, so I like the paint marker. I can still wipe this off with some nitro cleaner or whatever to get the paint off the diff housing, um, but the uh, the Sharpie, I find, wears off much much quicker, so I don't use the Sharpie. 
So now I go on to the front and the rear diffs, and I've incorporated a couple of little things that I learned building the center diff into my front and rear diff build. So the first thing that I noticed was this is my Duratrex mat, pit mat, and it has a groove all around the edges. You can see it in other pictures that I think it's there to, to keep screws from falling off the mat, right? So if you're working in the middle of the mat and a screw gets knocked, it'll fall in this little trough and it won't get knocked off the mat. Well, it fits perfectly. This is that u-shape that I was talking about that the hole inside the sh inner shaft is aligned with is this u-shape so by putting the and it fit perfectly in this trough so I could put the shaft in that trough drop the um, diff housing on of course the bearing is on, damn it of course the bearing is on the housing um, and then it fit nice and perfect and that way I know the alignment of the pin Right, So when I was building it, and I built it just the way I did the others, and then as I was putting the pin in, I could ensure that these larger um, cutouts were facing perfectly 12 to 6 o'clock because that's the orientation of that U-shape inside this trough. And because the trough was exactly a perfect fit, it wasn't moving around. So I could put this diff housing down on, I could turn it, and I could align that pin right up, and it dropped right in. And this is what it looks like once it's all the way in. And then I rotated it so that the screw holes were at 10 and 6 rather than the groove. Because now if this slides about a little bit, it's not going to slide all the way down and actually come loose. The best it could do is maybe come even with this because there's not enough space for this pin to slide. So this is what I was talking about. Once I got all this in, I went ahead and threaded up just a millimeter or so worth of threads in these in the diff housing. It made assembling the the um, crown gear so much easier without having to wrestle with cutting those threads once it was built. So again, just like in the other, filled it up the diff fluid, dropped the cross pin in, made sure that the small bevel gears aligned up filled it up and let the bubbles come out. You can see that we've got the fluid just barely to the very top of the cross pins, or sorry, to the small bevels. Here's another thing that I, I didn't realize until I got to this part, is that the screw holes go all the way through, which means light shines through, which means once you get that um, crown gear on, right, the large bevel is in, you got it on, you can turn the crown gear by holding the diff housing, and when you see daylight, you've got the diff housing, your gasket, and your crown gear are all aligned and now you can start to go ahead and screw in your screws. And then I found this. I'm missing a screw. So I only am at bag B and I've already got a screw missing. So that's not uber tight attention to detail techno. So strike one on you. Um, one thing I did notice too is that no matter how I tried the the gasket was always just a slight bit off. This has happened on all three diffs. The gasket was just a slight bit off. And what I did was I checked and the gasket itself is actually just a tiny bit bigger than this circle here. Because I tried to put the gasket into the crown gear and then drop it on top of the diff housing. And that was not the way to go because it's not quite the it's just a little bit too big, which I'm guessing is used to help seal the edges as well as the face so I put the gasket on top of the diff housing again the way I did the first ones and then just worked with the slight bit of off-centeredness that I have. So I fished around in my parts and of course all my parts are Tamiya parts so here's a Tamiya titanium 14 millimeter 3M countersunk screw and here's the Techno one. Oh my god what a difference in screwing these things in. This I had to stop after about every third or fourth fully tightened screw because my forearm was getting tired, my hand was cramping up because these things are going in so tightly. When I did the Tamiya screws, because I'm missing the screw, it just went in like butter. It cut the cut the, the teeth right the in the plastic, no problems. It just tightened right up. It went in nice and smooth. Those other ones were choppy. So um not going to bag on Techno for their hardware. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Whatever. Um, if I were to build this like again, I might consider buying a titanium screw kit for this truck because um, 
I'm now concerned if the fin and when it's difficult to see in this picture, but it almost looks like these are painted black because when I cut the threads in the diff housing, the black went away in that first millimeter on the teeth, right? And then, so are these just painted mild steel screws? Are they going to rust? Are they going to snap? I don't know. So at any rate, titanium Tamiya screws, thumbs up for you. And this is what it looks like, right? So here are the two Techno screws, and here are the two titanium Tamiya screws. Now, yeah, I only needed one. So why did I use two? Because I wanted the weight to be even, this rotational mass. So if I only had one titanium screw, I don't know how much of a weight difference it is. Maybe I'm being over anal about this, but I wanted the weight opposite each other to be the exact same. So these two screws theoretically are heavier than these two screws, but because I've got them balanced out, it won't make a difference. So now I've got one extra junky techno screw. And then at the end, you got three diffs. So front diff, center diff, rear diff. The rear is always a little bit lighter, and um, I'm going 5K heavier than what my buddy at the track has built his up to. Um, hopefully this will be a good um, set up for my diffs. I don't know. I'll report back after I get this thing built and run a few run a few races and let you know. Um, but this is where I'm starting off at. So that's it for the diffs. Um, not sure what the next part I'm going to build is. Um, probably the shocks uh, because those are also going to deviate from the manual a fair amount for the team build as well as some extra durability stuff that I've put in. So um, I'm going to get working on that. Uh, it's unlikely that that video will go up today. Um, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to do my best to try to get this stuff built because I'd really like to race this at the very next uh, track race um, that comes up because we have a series going and I can't race in the series because my truck is unbuilt. So uh, thank you for watching. If this is useful, please give me a like. If you've got questions why I did some th things or why I didn't do some things or if you've got some tips about techno that I don't know about, please leave those in the comments. Uh, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.